All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be playing the Tier 8 Premium Destroyer, the USS Kid, for the Fresh Look videos. All right, so here we are. Um, this is the USS Kid. This is what it looks like, of course, as we know. Um, Wargaming have updated the hulls, but not for USS Kid. It's updated them for Benson, Mahan, um, Fletcher, and Gearing, but USS Black and um, USS Kid have not been touched. I believe Sims will get an update soon, but not yet. So anyway, so let's start off by talking about... Of course, um, if you want to see a ship in another video, of course, please do write what ship you want um, in the comments below. I will be reading them, of course, as usual, um, and I will be picking something I do enjoy or something I want to feature. But pick a ship, of course, and I will just read through the comments and see what you guys want to be seen. All right, so here we have the USS Kid. I'm gonna start off with the build, uh, preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, superintendent, concealment expert, adrenaline rush, incoming fire alert, and I do have RPF. Normally I don't run RPF, but to be honest, if we're gonna feature the kid in a proper video for itself, I think RPF is not bad for the USS Kid. I'm also running concealment system mod one, prop mod one, aiming system mod one, engine boost mod one and main armaments mod one and i'm also running the engine boost instead of the dfa i think it's very important um in terms of the camouflage for the uss kid very simple american camo of course to the two color um you have the alternate here which i don't think looks as cool to be honest i do like the normal color though the color scheme it does look very nice for the uss kid um one of the craziest things but we'll talk about it in the game is it has a heel um apart from that i think we can go ahead and go into the match All right, so here it is, Nort, a map. It's a map, of course, in the game. Um, here we are in a tier eight destroyer USS Kid. We're in a tier six game. This is really good for the USS Kid. What makes the Kid different than the Benson? Well, it's actually not a Benson class. It's actually, I believe, a Fletcher class. So it's it's the same class as the tier nine ships, the Chung Mu, Black, and Fletcher. It does look very similar, of course, with the five turret setup. But it's a bit different because it doesn't have two torpedo tubes unlike Fletcher or the rest. It has one torpedo tube. The torps on it are Benson torps, 9.2 kilometers, same torps as Benson, so they're not crazy, and you only get one rack, but really so reload. Oh my god, what are these voiceovers? Wait, they're off. Quick voice message voiceovers are off. How are they spamming things? All right, one second. Audio off. How are they yelling? Okay, it's okay. But anyway, we can turn down the volume if we have to. But, um, so, we do have a heal, a speed boost, a smoke screen, Benson torps, and five guns. I'm not taking BFT here because it's actually only a 0.1 second difference. It really doesn't make a big difference, to be honest. Um, and with the heal, it's going to be fine. Um, apart from that, the RPF is going to help us find and locate things. Um, see if things are rushing at us and not. So, you know, we'll get to see. Alright, the sounds are muted. Perfect. Let us push through next to the B cap and see what we have. RPF is south. Or, yeah, south. Of course, the kid, to me, is probably one of the best premium ships you can buy in the game. Um, even though it doesn't have turbo torpedoes, it has the heal, which is really nice on a Fletcher class destroyer. It is basically a, a Fletcher class destroyer tier 9. Of course, the reload is worse, but it still doesn't mean really much because it's 5 turrets with a heal. I mean, it's pretty good, to be honest. Their gun range is decent. I'm spotted here. It's Benson. I believe Benson does outspot us by 0.1 kilometers, and that's okay. We should stay in the open here because we can't take trades like this because we have the heal. He shouldn't, he shouldn't do this because he can't take trades like this. Thing is, even if I lose 10k HP here, it really doesn't matter because I have four heals. So, thing is, this is pretty bad of a trade for him because he's just dying for free. The fact that he's still running in, even though he's dying, means he's throwing the game for his team. Well, at least throwing the B cap for his team. And, I mean, the play wasn't really good for him. I don't know what the play was there for him. I mean, pretty much just smoke and go dark and walk away. I think how he played it was really bad. So don't expect a lot of people to do that to you. So here's the airstrike coming. I think we can reverse out of it in time. 
Just have to watch the Byron Salvo, that's okay, he missed. Now you might be wondering, why am I open watering? Well, I just don't think anything's gonna kill me right now, at this moment in time. Something's shooting me, I saw IFA Pro. I don't know what it was. Here it is, oh it's Eindracht, behind the rock. That's okay. We can smoke up. Smoke generator started. Okay, might have gotten smashed by Eindracht? I don't know. I think we're fine right now, we're kind of chilling. Eindracht can't really shoot us unless he wants to blind fire us, which he is doing, of course. As you know, a lot of people blind fire in this game. It's funny, because I actually don't blind fire that much. I feel like it's a waste of time most of the time. Like, you could do other things in blind fire, like a destroyer and a cap. I mean, sure, you're going to reset the cap a few times. But, I mean, is it really going to win you a match? I don't think so, to be honest, most of the time. At least in this situation, I feel like he's wasting his time. He's very good at blind firing, though. He's very talented. The ship is on fire. But it's okay. Problem solved, sir. It really doesn't matter how much HP these guys are doing to us, because at the end of the day, we have a heal. And it's actually not a small heal, it's a 3.2k HP heal at 3.8 on, on a tier 8 on a destroyer. It's actually pretty significant, to be honest. Now, you might be wondering, oh man, this doesn't seem like it's gonna farm like a lot of average. And you're honestly right, it's not a damage farmer per se destroyer, because it only has American guns, right? And they're not crazy guns. So, I mean, fun fact, it's not that crazy of a, of a like, farmer. But that's not what it's meant to be. And it doesn't really pretend to be that. This Eindracht is still AFK here. That's unbelievable, actually. He's balding or something. I don't know what he's doing. He's really mad at me, I think. Or, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's because I killed his teammate Benson. He's upset about it. To be fair, I would be upset too if a USS kid walked in, killed my Benson, and ran away. Or then just took the cap in front of my face. Problem solved, sir. Problem solved, sir. I think the game's actually gonna end. One of the shortest videos in human history. This rate. When we kill the Fiji, the game ends. GG. <laughs> wow. Alright. There we go. That's the USS Kid game, I guess. 37k damage. And that's not bad, to be honest, for a USS Kid. That's actually super unicum, fun fact. With a kill. And a win. That's actually super unicum. So we got 37k damage, one kill, one cap. Um, we, we got top of the team, 1.3k base XP, of course. Um, detailed report, we ended up getting, of course, 10k on the Benson, 16k on the Byron, and 9k on the Eindracht. Um, of course, we won the game because Eindracht was AFK and Benson suicided. Um, 350k credits, 6k XP, 1.8k free XP, and 7.4k Commander XP. Alright, there you go. Um, I think I should play another game in the USS kit here because I feel like one game might not be sufficient when it's five minutes long. So let's queue up for a second game and I will show it to you also. Alright, so for a second game, we got Neighbors. We got the Eindracht from last game on our team. Oh no. That's not a good sign. It's okay though. It's tier 6 matchmaking. It's not too bad. So here I'm gonna spawn... Well, we spawned A. So because we can't get the bigger spawns, obviously. So we spawned A. So we're gonna go towards the A cap. Now people are like, Molta, why do you go to the cap you spawn on? That seems like a really bad idea. Now guys, I go to the cap I spawn on most of the time. Because I feel like it's the closest thing where I can influence the game. Um, I know some people have the general idea of going from A to C, for example. They'll, like, instantly switch flank, you know, for example. Or, you know, A to B, or, you know, C to A. Um, I don't think that's too good of an idea most of the time. I think spawning on the A side and going towards the A side 
might actually be a good idea. All right, guys, just to let you know. Um, another thing I tend to notice in randoms, which I want to bring up, is um, people do sometimes say we should focus A, B, or B, C, and just abandon a flank. Never do that. Never do that, because even, like, if you win B, C so hard, well, if you win C cap so hard, the enemy team's winning A so hard, they're just walking for free and getting your sides. They're gonna get crossfires. Like, you can be pushing the enemy team off here, but the enemy team is pushing down here. So you're stuck up here alone, whilst the enemy team have this sector all to their own. So please don't play A, B, or B, C in, like, randoms. Like, it's not, maybe, you know, like, in randoms, don't do that, you know? It's not a great idea. Hello, Kaga. I've got randomly selected at the airport. Wow, a random check. Who knew? Is that an Irion sniping me? 16 km AP? My gosh, I'm dead. Oh wow, the carrier is actually dropping at the store with torpedoes. Wow. Alright. It's gonna be a bit stressful here, guys, but it's okay. If the carrier wishes to do so, I mean, we can't really dictate anything. We can't tell him not to, so... So we'll just live with it, I guess. We'll just live with it. It is what it is, guys. You can't really do anything. If the carrier says this, you have to obey by law. I mean, it's kind of part of the game, so keep that in mind. He's coming again for a restrike. One might call him addicted. The strikes are very good. From what I can justify right now is the stri he's a really good strike aircraft carrier player. As you can see by these significantly damaging drops. He's smashing us with these torpedo strikes over and over again. Wow. Oh, wow. My god, it's like I can heal or something. I'm getting my HP back. Alright, so let's go down here. We're just chilling in the cap. If he comes back with torps, we're just gonna smoke up. So we don't have to deal with it and we'll secure the cap. And then we'll figure it out later. We're just gonna sit pre-kite here, and that's okay. Planes are going for the Eindracht, bow in, that's not good for the Eindracht. I'm gonna smoke up here. Smoke generator started. Got a fire in Algeri. Arian's blind firing. Dude, the blind fires is this day, today, man. Today is Sunday, by the way. Sunday today. The, the blind fires are pretty incredible, to be honest, today. It's a holy day, so... I would assume people's blind firing skills are higher today, of course. So it's pretty much USS Kid, guys. It's very um, one-dimensional, I would say, gameplay. It's very one-dimensional. You're pretty much relying on your guns for your firepower. Of course you can get torp damage. I've had games where I got in a lot, like... Not just a lot, but there's a video on YouTube I even posted where... I do pretty... A lot, like, a lot of damage with the kid. I get, like, 200k or something on two brothers. It was a good game, for sure. And I do land torps on it. But that's not its main suit, guys. I can't lie to you and tell you the torps are crazy. Because they're not. They're normal. They're Benson torps. <laughs> Like, they're not even that crazy on Benson, to be honest. Torpedoes to starboard. Ismail's right here. Just trying to fight the Irion, to be honest. Nothing much else you can do. What I know for sure is the Irion is really mad at me. That's all I know. Got a fire? Another fire? Irian Torps can't hit us, of course, because they are deep waters. 
Oh, they already lived? That's unfortunate. These torps will not hit the Aryan, by the way. They can't, obviously. Because of the rock in the way. Let's turn away. We don't want to be close to the D7 or the Aryan when the carrier will spot us. Because the carrier will spot us. Because the smoke screen just faded. And his div mates... Remember, these three are in a div, so... They are obviously probably communicating with each other, telling each other, hey, the USS Kid smokes out, you should go spot it now. Okay, Commander, I will go spot it for you, Irion. And then he goes, and then he spots him, and then the Irion pulls out of the corner, standing, getting ready to shoot me, except I have another smoke screen. And now the Irion is frustrated, so he's gonna blind fire out of frustration. This is pretty much your average randoms game, guys. Pretty much what happens every game. Honestly. It's so like... Picture... Per it, it, the same thing happens every game. You know? So you can obviously predict these situations or scenarios because... The thing is, people don't think outside the box. People do these these plays. They're always the same plays. They're always these uh, boring, like, carry your spot for me. I'll shoot to the destroyer if you spot him for me, etc. You know? So you're just there in your USS kid, just chilling, you know? You're vibing. And um, basically when the carrier comes to spot you, like the very nice generous person he is, um, you just smoke up in his face. And he's like, what? How did you do that? And then you go dark and invi you're basically invisible permanently. And the carrier's like, how? These destroyers are so overpowered. And then you make the division upset because they can't kill one destroyer in a three-man division. And well, basically what happens is they will go and re and they'll pick a destroyer next time because their double cruiser division did not function as intended. But it's okay because we're chilling in our USS Kid right now. We're vibing. We're going to push up towards their carrier and potentially kill him. And that's kind of what I'm excited for right now. Potentially getting the carrier kill. But anyway, I'm not going to chase the Bliska. I'm going to go for the carrier kill. Because of course, that's more exciting. <laughs> This is why I like taking the speed boost over DFA, by the way. DFA really doesn't do much, guys. I have to be honest with you. People who say it does a lot on, on USS Kid, I mean, come on. The speed is so much more important to rotate quicker. You can make more plays, but, like, the fact is you can make more plays by rotating quicker on different flanks than shooting down five extra planes a match or something. Or even 40 planes. Like, it doesn't matter if you shoot down 40 planes. It doesn't matter if you shoot down 50, 60. If they're fighter planes, they're useless anyway. So the fact is, having the, the speed boost is so much more important because you can play at around 43 knots. Now, even when this runs out, sure, you're going back to normal speed. But having that speed improvement is always really nice to have. Especially, the thing is, you have to plan for games without carriers. Not every match has a carrier in it. Games without carriers, your DFA is completely useless. It's basically completely useless, and it is. So having the speed boost ability is always really nice to have, you know? Because speed boost isn't just useful in the carrier games, or isn't just useful in non-carrier games. It's useful in all games, right? So that's kind of the nice thing to have about it. We did end up killing the carrier, of course. And he does drop me to say his final swear words at me by just dropping me. And that's okay. You know, no hard feelings towards the carrier guy. He was completely incompetent to kill me. And that's okay. Not everyone's a professional carrier player. I'm personally not, for example, a professional carrier player. And that's okay. Not all of us have to be pros with the pros in the carrier line, okay? Um, but of course, um, I'm not mad at their carrier, obviously. Um, he did his job very well. He did a round, a uh, total of around zero damage to me after dropping me five times. Um, otherwise, my Ismail actually got to rush him somehow. And Ismail got to rush a Kaga because the Kaga was too busy to kill, to kill a kid, even though he didn't even do any damage to it. But instead, he let the Ismail run at his hull. So guys, lesson learned today. Um, lesson learned today is the look and he's telling his team to report the Akizuki on A he's not taking fault that he forced um, four strikes on a USS kid doing zero damage from his carrier he doesn't care that's not important 
the important thing for him is to report the teammate Akizuki on his team. So, that's kind of mean, to be honest, but that's okay. Uh, that's really okay. It is what it is. Like, it is what it is, guys. What can you do? But yeah, to be honest, like, the Kaga actually could have, like, struck the Ismail and killed them. GG. I'm gonna skip to the end because nothing's gonna happen till the game ends. Okay, nothing. The game ended anyway. Okay, let's go back to port and check out the game. <laughs> Not a crazy game either. So, second game we got 53k damage, we got one kill. We got 6 fires and 13 plane kills, we got 1 cap and 3 spotted ribbons. We ended up getting 3rd place on the team, compliments to our Ismail here. Um, good job to him for living against the carrier, even though the carrier didn't even strike him. Um, we did 8.4k to the Kaga, 28k to the Iryan, pretty good. That's actually quite a fair amount of damage to the Iryan. 9k to the Ismail, 4k to the Algerie, 2k to the Blisk, and 800 to the York. Here's our damage distribution and damage taken. Really and truly two really boring games, guys, but this is pretty much the ship. Um, received 416,000 credits, 6k XP, 1.2k free XP, and 7.7k commander XP. Um, in terms of my commander build, um, I am running preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, superintendent, concealment expert, um, radio location, adrenaline rush, and incoming fire alert. For equipment, I'm running concealment expert, prop mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Engine Boost Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. For my statistics in the USS Kid, um, I don't think they're that crazy, because again, it's one of the older premiums I've owned on my account, but I have to say, the stats on it, I mean, they're not really that important, to be honest. Um, if I have it here, here it is. I have 178 games, 73% win rate, 55k average, which is really bad. But at the same time, you're not really playing for average damage in the USS Kid. This is not the goal, the ultimate goal of the USS Kid. Um, you can, of course, try it. You can average around 80, 90k, I think, at the top end, maybe 70, 80, 90, right there. If you really try every game, really hard. Um, but, in truly, 55k is not bad. 73% um, win rate is not bad. Um, in terms of its price... In the armory first, let's check the armory price. So we do tier 8 destroyer kid 9.4k doubloons. It's 9.4k doubloons, which is around the same price as the Atlanta, I think. Um, if we check the price of the Atlanta, um, yeah, it's around the same price as the Atlanta. That's pretty good, actually. Um, in terms of the premium shop price, if it were to load, the ships. And we go here, and then we go tier 8, and then we go American, and then we go Destroyer. 30 euros, 92 cents. That is the price for it. The question is, do I recommend the USS Kid? Um, even, even if the damage isn't too high? Yes, I do. The Kid is still a really strong ship to have, um, especially in ranked when it's tier 8. Why? Well, it's a Destroyer with a heal and pretty decent gun power, um, decent concealment, decent maneuverability, and a good smoke. Um... It has pretty much everything you need to fight other destroyers, of course, except for Hydro or Radar. But it has the heal, which is really nice and really important, I think, especially in ranked. Right? This ship is very good. I think it's great. Sure, you're not going to average crazy numbers, guys. Um, of course, in these two games, I couldn't show you a high damage game, and it is what it is. Um, but the ship is still very wonderful, and I do recommend you buy the ship if you enjoyed looking at the playstyle of how you can actually play it guns only with American guns. Um... If you guys want another ship to be featured in this um, series, please let me know. Um, of course, uh, this is my last week of exams, so I should be done by the end of this week. So we could be able to, we should be able to upload a thought process, of how I play video maybe um, by the end of the next following week after this week. 
but yeah, so this was the USS Kid, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have um, any comments about the video or anything, um, just leave them in the comments. Leave a like or something or a subscription if you. I would really appreciate it. Or join the Discord or whatever, guys. I would really appreciate everything. Or maybe come say hi on Twitch. But yeah, guys, um, if you want to request a ship, of course, leave it in the comments. But yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Big fan.